Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Joe Bacall and we are going to talk about the score Baja 1000, specifically 2010 and racing the Lexus. Let me tell you how hard it was. It was, it was really hard. This was probably the most challenging, most difficult race that we did over the five year span that we raced for Lexus. Um, lots of drama, uh, things that we didn't expect. Uh, I have some pretty cool uh, pictures and videos to share, but it's always fun to talk about kind of behind the scenes, what really happened. You know, you just, you don't ever get to see or, or get to talk to uh, some of the people that were involved. Um, and it's just a fun story to tell. So check it out and hope you enjoy it and look for the next one. Right, here's the map of the race you can see it goes down the entire peninsula you know over a thousand miles and uh, let me just tell you it's a long way got some of the Toyota corporate uh, guys out of Torrance uh, just we had a great crew a lot of Toyota and Lexus employees that came out on their own time and uh, really helped us um, be successful because without them you're only as good as you know you, you need the people to help you out because uh, you can only do so much as, as a driver but uh, uh, here we are going through contingency or tech we call it in uh, downtown Ensenada we got my buddy Bob Dittner who's an engineer actually at the Proving Ground in Arizona driving the truck uh, through but uh, yeah you know just a ton of fun talking to friends and, and hanging out with your family and, uh, and also uh, connecting with sponsors. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on in this picture. Maybe somebody told me something I didn't want to hear, but uh, again, you know, we're all uh, getting ready to go through tech, uh, make sure our suits, our helmets, trucks all dialed in, ready to go. And, uh, you know, just it's all about preparation. You've got to be ready to go, be prepared. This race takes you know six months to plan. It's it's not something you do um, overnight, and you better be ready for it because it'll bite you if you're not. So here we are, just uh, you know, handing out uh, different types of things that we we give away, um, just connecting with the, the fans that are there watching the race, and uh, you know we're uh, we're ready to go. Um, this is tech right here. This is uh, us pulling our helmets out, suits. Everything has to be checked and tagged and. Um, your score does a really good job in just making sure your roll cage and all the, the safety uh, items are, are kind of uh, dialed in because if it's not they'll they'll uh, they'll shut you down pretty quickly and make sure you're you're ready to go for the next day all right here we are race morning you know catheter is ready to go we are you know I'm sipping on my hammer nutrition uh, it's a mixture of different proteins and um, really really good stuff from hammer uh, when it comes to just keeping you alert and you know there's no sugar just uh, the proteins and things like that that I would absorb in my body for about a day before I even started the race and uh, that really helped me be prepared and be focused and not uh, not crash on sugar but this is the start of the race uh, as you can see very first turn you can see some of my competition behind me getting lined up and um, you know there's so many people out on the beginning of the race and you're, you're growing under the, the bridges in the, in the wash out of town and you just you can't even believe how many people are just cheering you on and let me tell you it's just it's just the coolest feeling and uh, you know you'll see some of the guys actually the very first turn some of the trophy truck guys will actually spin out right in the first turn which is pretty embarrassing but it happens and some people have you know slid in the fence and it's uh, that's Baja though. All right, I'm about to show you some running footage uh, of the race. This is just getting out of town, and the best part about this is this footage is actually I almost completely screwed up. Like the beginning of the race, I asked my co-driver Chris Kakoris, who's a great guy, but we we kind of screwed up on our on our notes, and uh, I thought I was going straight, and apparently there was a hard 90 degree left, which almost almost ended our race literally if I would hit that tree which you'll see quickly that um, 
that wouldn't have been real real awesome so check this out it's pretty funny but uh, this is uh, in car footage so as you can see that was a close call um, I'm a little bit trying to get back into my zone here because I was it definitely threw me off but uh, you know we saved it we only have a thousand miles to go, so. Um, but you can see I'm slowly getting back into the rhythm here. Um, yeah, it's just you can see. You know, it's it's hard to imagine being behind the wheel, but you know, there's there's some big drop offs. There's things that you are just not ready for. There's cars that come the wrong way. There's kids that run across the road. There's booby traps. I mean, it literally just doesn't end for the entire race, which at nighttime, I guess in the middle of the desert, it does quiet down a little bit, but you know, it's just crazy. And uh, I hope you guys like this footage. I'll let it run for a little bit, um, get a feel for, you can hear the LX570 motor, man. It, uh, it was strong. This was the older truck, the first truck that we built. And the engine was just really crisp and strong and ran really good. Uh, but you can hear the, the engine noise and uh, and you can hear the clickers in the back. Those are the King Shocks uh, making a bunch of racket, but uh, you forget about that pretty quickly when you're in the race. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this uh, in-car footage. Uh, as you can see, we're just heading down Ensenada. It's not not super crazy. Taking our time, you know, trying to make minimal mistakes. Uh, but uh, it's a long race, so you gotta you gotta you gotta pace yourself. All right, guys. So I'm gonna set this next video up. Um, this was a video done by Lexus, actually Team One, who's the agency for uh, Lexus. Uh, they put this together for me, um, and I thought it came out pretty well. It tells the whole story of the race, so I figured I'd just show it. Um, but uh, I'm gonna stop it in a few spots so I can kind of elaborate on different areas that happened um, during that race. He endured four months of chemotherapy. He survived three surgeries and was exposed to more radiation in one year than most people experience in a lifetime. Survival came with a renewed focus. Joe dedicated himself to his passion. When it comes to off and racing, every single turn is different. Every rock is in a different place. And that's what makes it so fun and exciting. In 2009, he launched his off-road racing career behind the wheel of a Lexus LX570. The LX570 races in the stock full-size class. And what that means is we're not allowed to make any modifications at all to the engine, the transmission, the powertrain. I don't even think he's ever taken the cam covers off of it. 2010 brought Joe his first championship. But one challenge remained. The Baja 1000.
more than any other, this legendary race is designed to test the limits of drivers and vehicles. Racing Baja is absolutely chaotic. You got dust, you got race cars broken. At times, there seemed little hope that Joe would finish, much less finish first in his class. All right, so as you can see, you know, uh, you're probably wondering, you know, finish, uh, much less finish first in its class was because we had a, a few problems. Um, going into San Felipe, it was nighttime. We were doing pretty well. Um, not exactly sure what position we were in, but uh, all of a sudden I felt something in the left rear and left rear drops and the tire wheel assembly basically comes, comes blown by me and runs into... Um, runs into a truck that's parked with a bunch of people, spectators that were having a cookout, I guess, or a, their bonfire, but uh, didn't didn't look good um, going that direction. Uh, I was like, oh, that's a problem. Uh, put us down, um, and uh, we had to really figure out what was going on. We sheared the studs off that left rear wheel, and um, luckily um, one of my chase guys, Ted Moncure, who was able to get us some brand new studs, in a really short amount of time, we uh, swapped those out and got, got back on the road. Uh, but the best part was one of the local um, spectators that were there still had a smile on his face. Didn't matter that his truck had a dent in it from my wheel and tire, but uh, he's like, do you want this back? I'm like, you know what? That's a gift. You can have it. I appreciate your help. And, uh, and we moved on from there. All right. So we get through the San Felipe, San Felipe issue and we get into Bay of L.A., Everything's going good. We're catching up uh, to, I think, Rod Hall and those guys, um, trying to make up some time. And I pull in the BFG pits. Everything's good. I pull forward. I did have a, an issue with the rear linkage of my suspension um, that w was pretty easy to fix. Um, one of the kangaroo guys who currently owns um, my newer race truck uh, helped. They had a bunch of guys there and really jumped in there and helped uh, fix that problem. But we had to turn the truck off because we had to do some welding. And this truck had a few little hiccups here and there on the electrical side. Didn't think much about it at the time. And I turned the truck off and it wouldn't fire. It would start and die. And I turned it on and turned it off for probably 10 to 12 hours. I just, all throughout the night, I'd start it and it would stop. I'd start it and it would stop. And I'm like, it was super frustrating and you know we were doing so well now we we're all about just can we finish this race it was just like I just need to finish so what we had to do is get to that next checkpoint before we get timed out and um, I just we were we we couldn't get the truck to run so I loaded the truck on the trailer our chase team was there and this is the best part <laughs> of, of how it all went down is I get on the sat phone I call my wife and I say, honey, truck won't start. I think we're done. And she said, do me a favor. Try to start it one more time while I'm on the phone. I just, I want to hear it. I'm like, okay. So I look at my co-driver, Chris. He kind of smiled at me. We are, I mean, we we're out of our gear and everything. We're just like. No, no, no. Let me clear it up for you. This is how that phone call went down. You called, said, honey, we're done. Call in the support vehicles and come pick us up. And I said, no, you haven't run out of time yet. You haven't timed out. You're going to keep pushing that start button until you run out of time. And so you're like, oh, fine. We'll do it one more time. So I heard you ask Chris, pick up that wrench, smack that while I push the start button. And sure enough, it started. Everybody's screaming. The B of Goodrich pits are screaming. My wife's screaming. Everybody's like, oh, my God, it's, it's running, it's running. So we literally had, and I'm not kidding, we had minutes before we were timed out. We had to get past that checkpoint. And the checkpoint guy was already, you know, basically packed up. But we got geared up. We unloaded the truck off the trailer. And we just made the checkpoint. And now we were back in the race. I mean, it was insane. Uh, and then, so my wife calls our, uh, our chase team ahead in, in uh San Ignacio is saying, hey, the truck's running, you know, everything's good, and they're on their way. Um, well, Paul Impson and everybody's like, oh, my God, let's get ready, let's get ready, they're going to be here. Well, they were, we were still four hours out, so everybody was just super excited. It was pretty funny. Somebody's got to, I got to, 
But that is exactly what he did. In 2010, his second year of racing, his third year as a cancer survivor, Joe Bacall won the Baja 1000. We went by the home here, probably like, they might actually win this race, huh? All right, so there you have it. Uh, obviously, a lot went on um, in between, but uh, I wanted to touch on the highlights, which were, were pretty amazing. And, uh, yeah, we actually got by Rod Hall and the Hummer, and uh, he ended up, I think they ended up rolling their truck. Otherwise, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have got by him. But uh, got it first. That was our very first Baja 1000 for, my, for me especially, but for Lexus USA as well. And, uh, you know, we changed the history books uh, uh, during that uh, during that time. So it was really a, just a great experience and uh, won the championship that year as well. So it was cool.